Hey guys and welcome to this fourth video tutorial where I'm going to be showing you how to use upper and lower bounds to solve some real world problems. So this is where things get a little bit more practical and we can actually see the use of upper and lower bounds. All right, so let's go straight into the first question and here it is. A garden has a length of five meters and a width of 10 meters measured to nearest meter. Find the largest possible perimeter of the garden. So I'm gonna give you a few moments to pause the video and have a go at this question. And when you come back, I'm gonna show you the work solutions. Welcome back guys. And we're now gonna be going through the solution. I hope you would have had a solid attempt at this question. So in this question, we've been asked to find the largest possible perimeter of the garden. Now, as you know, the perimeter of a shape is the sum of its sides. So it would be the sum of the sides of this garden. Now, the reason there is a largest possible perimeter is because the length and the width have been measured to the nearest meter, which means that there are a range of possible values that the length and the width could have been before it was actually rounded to the numbers you see here, five and 10. So let's consider the range of possible values of the length and the width by looking at their upper and lower bounds. Okay, so using the fact that the length has been rounded to five meters, we can calculate the lower bound, which is equal to 4.5 meters. And we can also calculate the upper bound, which is equal to 5.5 meters. Again, always remembering the degree of accuracy which it's been measured to, which in this case is the nearest one meter. We could also calculate the lower bound of the width, which is equal to 9.5 meters, and the upper bound of the width, which is equal to 10.5 meters. So, using the fact that the perimeter of this garden, which is in the shape of a rectangle, is equal to the length plus the length, plus the width, plus the width. In order to find the largest possible value that this perimeter could be, we simply need to choose the largest possible values that the length and the widths could be. All right, so in this case, we're gonna choose the upper bound for length, which is 5.5 meters, and the upper bound for width, which is 10.5 meters. So this gives us that the maximum perimeter, or P max, which I've written here, is equal to 5.5 plus 5.5 plus 10.5 plus 10.5, which is equal to 32 meters, which is the largest possible perimeter of the garden. All right, so done. Okay, let's have a look at the next question. Find the smallest possible area of the garden. Okay, so I'm gonna give you a few seconds to pause the video and have a go at this one, and I'll show you the solution when you come back. Welcome back. So to find the smallest possible area of the garden, we have to consider the fact that the area of a rectangle, remember that that's the shape of this garden, is equal to the length times by the width. So in order to find the smallest possible area, we need to multiply the smallest possible values by each other. And in this case, it's gonna be the lower bound of the length times by the lower bound of the width. So the smallest possible area is equal to 4.5 times by 9.5, which is equal to 42.75 meters squared. Okay, so Adam is 2.5 meters tall and Sarah is 1.8 meters tall, measured to the nearest one decimal place. Find the minimum difference between their heights. So I suggest you pause the video and have a try and I'll show you the solution when you come back.
Okay, so in this question, we're given the heights of Adam and Sarah, who are 2.5 meters tall and 1.8 meters tall, respectively. And by the way, they are giants. It's really, really tall. And these heights have been measured to the nearest decimal place, right? And we've been asked to find the minimum difference between their heights. So we know what the difference of their measured heights are that's easy you just take one away from the other you do 2.5 minus 1.8 however you have to consider the fact that their heights have been measured to the nearest one decimal place all right so we need to consider their upper bound and lower bound using the degree of accuracy all right so let's have a look at adam's height so we're given that his height was rounded to 2.5 meters so therefore the lower bound of his height would be equal to 2.45 meters and the upper bound of his height would be equal to 2.55 meters using the fact that it's been rounded to the nearest decimal place. We were given that Sarah's height was rounded to 1.8 which means that the lower bound would be equal to 1.75 meters and the upper bound would be equal to 1.8. 85 meters. So out of these values, which ones are we going to use to find the minimum difference? Well, in order to find the smallest difference, you want to do the smallest number minus the largest number. So we're going to be subtracting 1.85 from 2.45 to give us a minimum difference of 0 0.6 meters. All right, let's have a look at the next question. Find the fastest possible speed of a Tesla car if it travels a distance of 100 meters in 3.5 seconds. And both of these quantities, distance and time here, have both been measured correct to two significant figures. So for this final question, I'd like you to pause the video and have a go yourself. And when you come back, I'll show you the solution. All right, so we've been asked to find the fastest possible speed of a Tesla car, given the fact that it travels a distance of 100 meters in 3.5 seconds, which is just lightning fast, all right? Um, both of these values have been rounded to the nearest two significant figures. All right, so I'm quite a big fan of cars. And if you know the Tesla model, you probably know a famous man by the name of Mr. Elon Musk, who is constantly on missions to make the next best thing. All right, the next biggest thing, the next sleekest thing, and the next fastest model of cars. All right, so you can imagine that him and his crew will be running various tests to see how fast some of these models can go in the shortest space of time. All right, so let's see how he might try to calculate this, all right? Okay, so using the fact that the distance has been rounded to 100 meters to the nearest two significant figures, it means that the lower bound is equal to 95 meters and the upper bound is equal to 105 meters. We can do the same thing for time as it's been rounded as well to the nearest two significant figures which means that the lower bound for time would be equal to 3.45 seconds and the upper bound for time would be equal to 3.55 seconds. Now, in order to calculate the fastest possible speed, we need to recognize that speed is equal to the distance divided by the time, okay? So we've been given a distance and we've also been given a time so we can calculate the speed. All right, now to find the maximum possible speed, notice that in this case, we are dividing one value from the other, okay? So to find the largest speed, we need to have a larger number in our numerator and a smaller number in our denominator. So that means we're going to be using the upper bound for distance and the lower bound for time. So putting that into our formula, we get that the maximum speed is equal to 105 divided by 3.45, which is equal to 30.43 and so on meters per second, which is ridiculously fast. All right, so 
that brings us to the end of this tutorial and I hope you found it useful. Do keep an eye out for my next video where I'm going to be going through a slightly trickier problem which involves you having to really pay attention to the words. Alright, so until then, keep up the good work and I will see you soon. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up, leave your comments down below and subscribe to this channel so you'll be the first to know when we release our next videos.